G'day folks, it's Dean with OnlineToolReviews.com I just wanted to do a quick video on battery chargers um, AA batteries like so and, and triple A's you use them in just about everything these days um, and you, you really need a, a, a proper charger to charge these um, this is your standard sort of stock charger you can buy at a, a, a supermarket um, hardware store anywhere that sells batteries often they sell these with um, two or four rechargeable batteries uh, as a package uh, they, these are not bad um, they're, they're, there's a few problems with them though um, first being the well how, basically how many batteries you can charge at once and the configuration of them so if you'll see here um, you can only have two batteries in one side or the other or four batteries so you can't charge one battery at a time with this charger it it, it won't work it'll destroy your batteries um, and preferably with these chargers you want to have matching cells so if you buy a pack of um, two or four um, you know rechargeable batteries you, you want to use the same brand um, batteries and keep them together so you know if you've got a device that used two batteries I, I realize these two are, are different but um, for, for sake of argument if, if you buy um, two energizer batteries for example and you use two in your your remote control for your TV or uh, your, your digital radio or, or whatever you use them in you want to keep those two as a, as a set and, and try not to separate them um, but yeah, for, for this charger, um, you've basically got to have either two in there, two in here, or four batteries. Um, these work on sort of a, a timed charge. Um, so they'll run, uh, th this one's a 15 hour timer. Um, so regardless, th they call these dumb chargers because they're, they're not smart enough to to sort of um, recognize the the state of the current state of charge or capacity of of, of the batteries you put in them um, so for example if I had two batteries here that I wanted to charge um, even if they're both energizers or any other brand um, but one of them had say um, for example 2000 of the um, 2500 capacity rated on the battery left so if it had 2000 milliamps capacity remaining and the other one had say um, you know 200 or, or was really um, sort of depleted and I, I put these both in the charger this charger will charge the batteries for 15 hours regardless of, of the battery capacity um, so both these cells would get a 15 hour charge at um, whatever the um, amp or, or charge rate is or the current rate uh, this one I think is 225 to 265 milliamp hours um, yeah anyway it, it doesn't really matter um, the point is that this battery here that had the 2000 it was say three quarters um, for argument's sake it was three quarters full that's going to get a 15 hour charge at the same current as, as this battery this battery would need a 15 hour charge at that current this battery doesn't so this battery is going to get that going to be essentially overcharged it'll get hot it'll heat up and heat is the biggest killer of of battery cells so um, generally even though NIMH or nickel metal hydride batteries um, don't have a memory effect as such um, charging one of these um, for 15 hours when it's um, you know even half full it's going to result in in less life of, of the battery you're going to get far less cycles um, recharge cycles than you would normally so um, these are okay if you've got nothing else but you definitely want to make sure your batteries aren't uh, are matched they they have the same sort of capacity there you, you know they have the same capacity remaining um, and you know before you put them into the charger so these are okay but they're certainly not ideal um, the the better option by far and one and pretty much a, a device you want to have in your house at all times is is a charger that has independent um, charging cells and is a smart charger 
This one's the Lacrosse Technology BC, where is it? There it is, BC700 um, for NICAD and NIMH batteries. It'll take double A's and triple A's. Um, this is what they call a smart charger and smart people use them um, because you, you'll well th there's a number of reasons but primarily it'll maximize the life of your batteries um, now as I mentioned um, whereas this particular model will only do two batteries at a time or four um, this model has independent charging circuits um, so you can put um, one battery into this charger and charge it. If you, if you only had to charge one battery up, um, if you've got like a, a small remote control that only takes one battery or or a, a small MP3 player, some of the old ones just take one AAA or anything that takes one battery, um, you can charge this on this charger with no problem at all. Um, so that's the, the one of the big advantages of using a, a charger with independent charging circuits. Um, the the other advantage of, of this being a smart charger is that it, it detects the it detects voltages and, and other parameters of your battery um, to prevent it being overcharged. So, um, and in addition, this particular model will allow you to charge at three different um, current rates as well, three different currents, um, being 200, 500, and 700 milliamp hours. So. Um, you know, it, it can charge fast in, in a couple hours depending on the capacity of your battery or you can set a slower charge rate um, to charge things overnight. Um, generally speaking, using a slower charging rate will, it, well, is better for your battery cells. Um, fast charging them, them can sometimes um, degrade their, their uh, life. Um, or or their, their cycle rate life or how many times you can recharge them. Um, but, you know, 7, uh, for example, this battery being 2500 mAh at a 700 milliamp hour charge rate, in theory that would be charged in uh, three and a half hours roughly. Um, at 200, obviously, it would take, um, what's that, 10 times, uh, about 12 hours, 12 to 13 hours um, at the 200 rate. Um, but these, this, this is the charge you want. As I mentioned, you can charge. It doesn't matter if you've got matching brand batteries or not. Um, I can put any of these batteries in. Um, and a loops are probably one of the best rechargeable NIMH batteries on the market. So if you can get those, definitely grab them. Um, these energizers are not too bad either. Um, and I've got a Vata battery here, which is a, a designed as a 15 minute charger uh, charge battery when used with a Vata charger but uh, it'll work okay in this one as well um, so I can put four different brand batteries it doesn't really matter I can put a triple A here or a triple A here if I want mixed in with the double A's it, it doesn't matter because um, the the charger will identify the battery and, and it'll charge each one independently on its own circuit um, so none of these batteries are essentially linked in the charging process um, and this is really what you want to have. Um, so I'll plug this charger in and just give you a quick rundown. Now I, I don't know the state of these batteries. This one I've had for about six years or seven years. Um, I've just pulled these out of the drawer. The, the inner loops are the ones I use mostly and I always keep them charged and the energizers as well. But we'll plug it in quickly and um, just go for a quick run through of this charger. So as I plug it in, you'll notice it'll just start up here um, on the display there. That's just the version number. And you'll see here it's automatically giving us a, a readout of those voltages. Um, and when it changed the 200 there, that was the charging current um, that uh, is automatically selected. So it defaults to 200 milliamps hours. And as you can see, it's, it's going to charge those batteries at, at that rate um, for the moment. Um, I can change the display here. That shows me the current battery voltages. So this cell here at 1.26 volts. Um, I mean, th these voltages now that they're being charged will show higher than they, what they actually were. Um, if you want an accurate representation, you, you check that number when you insert the battery. 
Um, if I take this one out, for example, it, it defaults to null, meaning that either the there's no battery in there or the battery voltage is so low that it's not giving a reading. But if I put this one back in now, um, showing 1.26, um, which is uh, almost probably fully charged or, or close to being it um, for a for a 1.2 volt NIMH cell, um, 1.28, 1.3. You can see this one's at 1.4 volts at the moment. Um, it'll charge anywhere around that figure. Um, again, it depends on the brand as well. Um, but usually, um, when you've got around 1.3 or 1.28 volts showing, um, whether you use this as a guide or you use a multimeter, uh, generally, that means the battery's holding quite a, quite a good capacity of charge, or at least a good voltage anyway. Um, capacity's a separate thing. Um, but yeah, the, this one, for example, I can display and um, that'll show me how long the batteries have been on charge, one minute. That'll just count up. Um, this is the current charge rate. You can see that's just hovering around the 200 that we set, or was automatically set. Um, again, the voltage, and this display here um, will tell you how many, how much, I guess, capacity or milliamps have been added to the battery since the the charge started. Um, if I wanted to change, for example, um, the rate at which one of these cells was being charged, um, remembering that it was on 200. Um, basically, you've, you've got to do that at the start, I think, with this charger. And as I put it in, um, you'll notice it gives me the battery and then it should flash 200. And then I've got to press this current button. No, that's not working. No doesn't like me. Okay. Um, if I take them all out, again, probably shouldn't do this in normal use, but um, I'll see if I can get that working just for the purpose. Um, plug that in, 1.3 volts, 200 milliamps. Okay, I press the current button, just cycles through the available settings, so if I want to charge this one at 500 or 700, I can do so. Um, and I'll let that um, just go on 500 for now and just wait till that sort of kicks in or flash and then start and then I'll put another one in the next bay across and again voltage will show up and then that'll the current and then I can change that to 200 or 500 it's only going to let me do for that one um, so I'll set that to 200 and just wait till that kicks over and then we'll try this one again voltage and then current will come up you've got to press the change this current um, as soon as, as, soon as um, that first current um, screen message comes up otherwise it won't work so that one's at 500 um, I'll try this one here And 200. Now it's letting me choose between those two, so I'll put that one as 500 as well. Um, just wait till it kicks in there. So the you can cycle through different modes here. I'll see if I can get that on camera. There's the standard charge, which is really what you need most of the time. But you can. Um, it's not going to let me do that while it's charging, but. Um, I take that one out and reset that one and it's gonna let me do that no it's not okay take them all out okay so back to null never works while it's on camera Yep, yep. No, that was my fault. <laughs> I had to select the, the individual cell first. So, um, pressing that, we can 
there's discharge that will discharge the battery um, if for whatever reason if, if you want to discharge a cell um, before recharging it sometimes that can help um, bring a, an old battery to life sometimes um, not always the case um, and again pressing that selector uh, there's a charge test which will charge the battery up fully and then it will run a test to give you like a battery capacity rating um, and we're back to charge and there'll be a discharge and there should be another one there it is discharge refresh so if you've got an old cell that's not holding charge you can run it um, through this discharge refresh cycle and what that'll do is it'll discharge the battery and I think off memory it recharges it to a certain level and it goes through a discharge and charge cycle um, and the idea is that's to try and um, uh, I don't know if it's maintain or, or reduce or change the chemistry of the battery so it will then hold more charge again in the future but it, that particular function won't work for every battery you put in the charger it, it's really dependent on the age of the battery and if it's you know set if it's been left in a discharge state for a long time um, batteries in general that are left in a discharge state for a long period of time um, will generally suffer some kind of damage to, to the chemistry or, or the the, the cell so it, it won't recharge as easy but um, you know it's it's useful to give it a go um, if you've got some old batteries you know bef that aren't taking a charge or aren't holding a charge uh, before you throw them out so give them a, a discharge and a discharge refresh run through a, a smart charger like this one and and you know you, you may be able to recover it back to a, a, a reasonable working level in my experience you know, when I've put batteries through this, the, the success rate's probably 30%. Um, three or four in ten will sort of be recovered and be able to be used again for, you know, six six months or so, and, and then eventually they, they do all die. But, um, again, the importance of, of getting good quality batteries to start with. Um, but, yeah, that, that's basically it as a primer. Looks like I've been going for 17 minutes now. I apologise for that. I've been waffling on, but um, get yourself one of these Lacrosse Technologies BC700. They also have a BC1100, I think, which probably has or allows you to charge with 1100 milliamps as, as a setting. I'm, I'm guessing, um, but anyway, it, do, it doesn't really matter as long as you get um, a decent smart charge with independent charging circuits that's what you really want if, if you're serious about um, you, you know saving money with three chargeable batteries because a lot of the saving goes into uh, you know comes from how long you're able to use these batteries and how many cycles you can get out of them if you you know if you're paying five ten times the cost per cell um, for, for a rechargeable battery and you, you're only getting eight cycles out of them because you left them, you know, discharged for a year or so and they no longer work, then you've kind of wasted your money. So um, you can throw, you know, get a smart charge like this. You can throw the batteries in no matter what uh, level of capacity or, or what charge state they're currently in. Um, and this this will take care of it. It's like a battery manager, essentially. Um, when these all these cells are completely charged, um, this charger will um, stop charging or, or it'll provide a trickle charge and it'll give you a, an indicator on the screen that says full, F-U-L-L, -L, uh, meaning that the battery's at full capacity um, and then it'll either, I think it either stops charging it or it'll um, um, uh, reduce um, the, the charge rate. So that's it, Lacrosse, get, get a good smart charger, they'll save you time, um, they'll save you money and you'll, you'll get great extended life out of your rechargeable AA and AAA batteries. Uh, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it. Um, and look out for more videos in the near future. Thanks very much.